Okay, it's recording now. So after those introductions, today's agenda is basically presenting the logic of the program to you, mentors. Uh, second time to understand which is the mentor role, which are the which is the scope of the mentor role, uh, which is the program instructor, and a, a very brief overview of the content that you will receive later this uh, this evening. And then try to uh, pinpoint some key resources, communication channels, as you may have some already, some preview there in the, in the notes. And finally, how do we continue with all this? So to start, just to understand the big picture of the program, there are uh, basically four goals we have, uh, we have thought for it, which is basically starting to, for, um, for mentees to understand how to design open hardware projects, but also how to build for collaboration applied to hardware, which is quite different from um, where all this program starts, which is the Mozilla Open Leaders curriculum and program. Um, acquire the foundations for leading these projects and trying to understand what happens when, uh, when you open a, a project that is about hardware. And besides this, to become multipliers or a spreading for them to to help them to spread the word about why it's good to make open power. So to do this or to achieve this, what we thought it was the best approach is to help mentees frame their project as um, a group of assumptions that they are making along the way. So to, we will try to help them identify these assumptions and design proper tests for, okay, testing if what they are thinking it's going to happen is right or not. And these assumptions are not purely technical, are not only assumptions about which technology I should use or which resources I need for doing what, but also which is my user, who is my user, and who, how, in which way am I going to approach my users, um, how am I going to build a community? How am I going, how, how do I plan this project to evolve in the future? Um, this is part of, uh, as you probably imagine, an iterative process along, along the program, along each week. And each week is treated as a small sprint with goals, with assumptions, with, assumptions, sorry, with assignments, and with tools and resources to help them achieve that. So this is kind of what I just mentioned, but uh, the background of the program then is to identify your hypothesis, try to understand which tests you need to design to test them, and capture the learnings and re-enter uh, re the process. Exactly. And uh, now we're talking about your role in the program because you are all here because you are becoming mentors. So um, for us, um, we wanted to define the role of, um, you know, of a mentor in our program and the most important rule is you don't need to be an expert. You are a facilitator. So it's all about like helping the project leads, the people who applied for our programs with their projects to yeah, bring their project to the next level. Um, and the most important thing about this is actually, so in our opinion, to help them scoping their program, their project, to have an attainable goal. Yeah. Um, as I said, you don't have to be an expert, but you can be an expert if you have the expertise in the particular field. And uh, if you don't, um, it's super easy because we already have a collection of experts at our hand. That we have the list on our website. You, we will share um, a list of contact details with you and then um, you can connect the project leads you are mentoring um, with the experts we have in our list, but you're also free to, well, uh, connect them to people you know, to your network, and if you want, you can also share if you are uh, trying to contact somebody of your network and ask them if they want to be uh, like an official part of our program and also be um, like put into the list of our experts. Another job, um, as we see it for a mentor, is to point the project leads to resources and show them maybe good examples of what to use and also give them examples, maybe like basically leading by personal examples. Yeah, we all chose you 
so we you are a mentor because we think you have um, like already a, you did a great work as part of the openness in many ways like openness of the internet hardware production or software or community building and so on and what we actually want you to do is share um, all your experiences and your values and everything you experienced in your whole journey through the open world and um, basically infect the mentees with your spirit. Right. So, well, what, what we want you to do or like something with what we expect from a good mentor is, um, well, some basic uh, things like that you should try and give constructive feedback to the mentees and um, that you practice active listening and um, try actually to lead um, the mentee. So the mentee should actually answer his own questions. So try to do or yeah, to practice effective, effective, sorry, effective questioning. So you will lead them their way in, in directly. Um, we just want to point out the difference to other roles in, yeah, not our program. These are just other examples because we had this question at, uh, at the last call. So we just we just put the other roles like sponsor and coach there to um, differentiate um, them from the mentor role. So what we think the power of a mentor is the it's the wisdom, wisdom, authority. Your topic is actually, so what, what you should work with the mentee is um, on career or on personal growth. And um, well, the duration of our program is 14 weeks, but um, yeah, well, a mentor mentee relationship can go on also a bit longer. It does not have to, um, but in the end, uh, it should be more or less midterm like duration. Well, you are bound to. Sorry. <laughs> no worries. You are bound to our program scope. So I hope you share our vision and also the scope of our program. And if you have any like ideas or anything you are do you do not agree with, you can always let us know and we can talk about it and maybe also integrate some parts um, into our program, some new parts. So we are always like looking for feedback and if you have um, feedback for us just send us an email contact us in, in the many ways so what's your reward well we all do this you know, voluntarily but we hope you will also learn something from your mentee or during this um, program and um, what we try to do is also connect you to other people, other mentees and mentors and other projects. And maybe you can get an overview about like, what's going on in the field at the moment. And yeah, we can also give you some feedback about your work and uh, yeah, we'll help, help you to advance also as a mentor. One, um, one comment I would like to make there is that you may uh, be mentoring projects that are, let's phrase that other way. The projects that participate of this program are in different stages. So they may be a very uh, well thought idea that is written down and it's starting or an ongoing project that already has a community, but for some reason, it still needs some work on to be completely developed. They want to grow the community more. So part of the mentor is trying to understand uh, part of the mental role, sorry, is trying to understand how the big picture of the program is tailored to the particular case of the mentee. Um, this is why there is some flexibility yeah, and bringing something that Jose mentioned in the very beginning, but not everyone was here, is that this is the first uh, cohort of our program. So the, we are completely open to suggestions and collaborations and constructive criticism to make it better. Shall I move? Yes, please. Quick comment before you move on. Okay. Uh, for everybody who joined a little bit later, the notes are on the chat uh, or a link to the notes that we're using there on the chat window uh, of this call. Thank you. Yep, put your name there. Um, I don't, sorry, I don't remember if I should take this part or, yeah? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so moving on to the, to the program structure, 
just to give you some overview of how this is going to work. And basically, we wanted to uh, highlight the differences with the Open Literacy Program for you, uh, for those of you who have already participated, because it's a bit different. We are not going to have one cohort call, one mentee call, one co individual call. It's not going to happen like that. We are going to have a week zero that is starting next week, in which the mentee is working uh, on their own, let's say, on their own. They're working on uh, preparation about um, setting up the GitHub repositories, reading about the materials we're going to use, uh, scheduling the meetings with the mentor, getting to know the mentor, okay? So this is happening next week. Then we have a main group of uh, weeks between uh, week one and week 11, in which the main content of the program is going to be delivered. Each, as we are going to see, each week has a purpose and again, its goals, its assignments and everything. And on week 12, we have a sprint to apply some of the things <laughs> to, to a real case, to real life. Finally, after the sprint, we're going to reflect on what happened. And on week 14, which is the final week of the program, um, mentees are allowed to promote what they have done. So what happens in week zero, this means next week, uh, you will be introduced to your, uh, to your mentee. In fact, this email, you will receive it probably this evening. Um, introducing your mentee, uh, the meetings should be scheduled. This, uh, we wanted to stress this as kind of the responsibility of the mentee because we think that the mentee is the one who has to take ownership of the process he or she is going through. Um, also, they are going to learn about some co basic concepts and resources online, set up the GitHub repository and complete a self-assessment. So in the next week, when the mentorship relationship starts, let's say, um, you have something to work on. So each week, you will read, uh, you would not, sorry, not you, but the mentee will read and watch some uh, training material. They will complete a practical assignment that is directly related to their project and they will attend 30 minute meetings with you. So these meetings, as you can see, if you go back to the schedule, in, in light blue, you can see that you have three mentor meetings. These are individual 30 minute meetings with your mentee. And then there is a cohort call, okay? This cohort call are thought as peer review meetings. We are going to go there next. So after the main content of the program is delivered, we have an online sprint. This, the, the idea of the sprint is that the mentee can present what they have been working on, ready to open it for contributions. So we, it's going to be organized by us. And the idea is that um, during this sprint, before this sprint, the, the mentee can attract contributors to the project or the team because some, this is another important thing. Sometimes your mentee has a team and it's the expected thing to, to have in the program. It's not probably it's not one person only. Um, so during the sprint, they are open to contributions. They are open to promote what they do. And also they will have to at least contribute with a small uh, contribution to other mentees project just to, um, for them to enforce collaboration. On week 13, we have another individual mentor-mentee meeting in which uh, it's a debrief of the, of the sprint. And after reflecting on what happened, the idea is that you, the mentee starts thinking of, well, after the program, what is going to happen with my project? How can I continue? And something very important for us is that um, we want them to provide some, uh, some feedback on their program participation. Which, which things they found useful, which things not, which things they would do better. And finally, in week 14, we are inviting everyone to uh, provide a maximum five minutes demo of their project in any format they want. They can record something, they can um, set up a website and do a, a screencast, or whatever they can, they can think of, but maximum five minutes, it's a public call, anyone can, can attend. And the idea again is to promote what they, what they did. So differences between the mentor meetings and the cohort meetings. The mentor individual meetings are based on weekly assignments. And the idea is that you track progress. You, as Alex mentioned, you connect mentees with other resources, with experts, with communities. It's a 13, 30 minute duration meeting. It's documented by the mentee in a file that we provide a template for it. And um, what we ask you to do is after these meetings happen, 
we will share by the end of the slide uh, a tracking sheet in which you tell us, yes, the meeting happened or no, it didn't happen, why? That's all you have to say. Um, differently, the cohort meetings, which are every three weeks, are group calls, that, which are run by us. And the idea, uh, as I mentioned, is a peer review where meet, uh, sorry, mentees interact with other mentees and they share what they have done and they try to criticize in a constructive way uh, their work. This is not mandatory for mentors. Of course, you can join. Um, but again, it's not it's something for your mentee to interact with peers. Should I pass on to you? Yes, I, I, I think um, it's my turn again. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, Yes, one of the main tools for the beginning, at least, um, and uh, also through the, uh, through the program is the Open Canvas. And with this, yeah, with this um, Open Canvas, we want to narrow down like everything and to help the mentees to, um, yeah, well, basically, yeah, figure out um, yeah, what they want to work on also during the mentoring program. Because as you already know, as um, Julieta already said the projects are on quite different, in quite different stages. And um, basically what they have to do is um, you know, find their unique value proposition, which is a very important part of the program, and then um, identify the things they want to work on. And uh, yeah, well, then start doing this in um, basically, yeah, tutored or mentored by you. Next slide, yeah. so. You probably ask yourself why we want to use the canvas all the way because we want to also use it during the program to always reevaluate the things and the mentees um, already identified or wrote down in the very beginning um, with the with the canvas. But um, we think it's a great way of you know, to generate ideas and um, and like ways to do a project. And yeah, as I already said, it's somewhat or we want to use it as a checklist. You know? to keep an eye on um, the different tasks and different parts of an open source project. Right, and that's a great way, at least in our opinion, um, to capture the vision and um, yeah, try to like also visualize and synthesize your learnings during the way um, in the development of the program project. Right, um, yeah, and well, Last but not least, also a way to scope, as I already said, and to shape um, the, the goals and targets of the project during the program and also beyond. Um, well, as also Julieta already said and uh, demonstrated in the, like, in the, uh, in the curriculum, um, we have different assignments for each stage. And here are just some examples. Like, and the very first thing will be thinking about the value propositions and so on, customer profiles, personas and pathways, and so on. But we will also talk about documentation standards, contribution guidelines, hope and hardware licenses, so um, also completely other things. But in, in general, as I already said, there will be assignments for each stage, which are in, in accordance to the program content at this stage. So um, a very important part, um, it's, it's basically like a part, it's talking about the setting. So at which point, at, at which position or which stage is the project you're mentoring at the moment. And we just want to yeah, give you, like show you this, the general scope. Um, most importantly, we, as I think Julieta already introduced this in, the projects are in different stages and you as a mentor you have to identify also the stage in which the projects are in and also help them accordingly and to mentor them in that way but we want to like point you in that way that um, the projects usually have uh, they have should have like a really uh, i started in the wrong way but projects they, it's not about like the whole, it's about the program because we are thinking in a long scale. It's not about like the two weeks of the program, sorry, not two weeks, 14 weeks of the program, but um, it 
should be there should be also it should be scalable and you should also think about um, the time beyond the program right sorry um well and with this we are already at our end and uh, we want to give you a short summary of um, what we talked about now during the call so most importantly your job is to help the mentee to define the scope of their project for the program for this 14 weeks yeah every week has a goal a resource and an assignment and uh, we will send the curriculum where we um, all wrote this down via email to you and your job is um, to help the mentees um, to you know, fulfill basically their assignment to be there to monitor this um, because they have to do uh, each week a small mini sprint and um, have a de deliverable in the end right um, an important part is also that um, yeah, because the sprint has is also a main part of the program um, the mentee should be oriented also towards the sprint so basically everything you are doing before the sprint and also after the sprint is for the sprint like the big sprint the global sprint um, i already introduced this in the very beginning the, connect them to outside resources to your community to your network um, you can use our list of experts uh, to connect them to other people but please use also your own network and the people you know well practice active listening and effective questioning to guide the mentors um, through the program and um, well basically help them to help themselves you will get weekly emails from us with the content and the respective assignments and to-dos. So you always know what, uh, at which stage we are, what the mentees have to do, so um, you can help them in the very best way. So in the end, we collected some practical information and there will be also some time, uh, some time in, the, in the end where you can ask questions and we are also happy to hear your feedback. But um, first of all, um, we have, we want to talk also about our core values because they are, uh, well, respect for everything and everybody. And um, we also, um, we think it's also important that we trust, trust each other. And we want to aim for rigor and also for quality. And I hope you all share with us our core values. If you have more to add to this list, please let us know. Um, we have, um, as Julieta already said, the mentorship tracking spreadsheet and all the, so the presentation is shared with you um, via the link in the document, but uh, we will also send you this links again in an email. Right, we have this list of experts I was already talking about quite a lot, and um, we also have a list of relevant open source hardware related resources and this is a living list um, it's a document in a github repo in our github repo and we would be happy if it grows a lot more and um, you are welcome to add more things exactly so for the communication we have a general riot channel and a mentors only riot channel where you can ask questions to other mentors and connect to each other and also share yeah well if you have problems and everything but we can also be so you can reach us via email we have this um, open hardware for me gmail address where you reach all of all the four of us um, and we also have our Twitter account, which we um, are glad if you link, if you tweet about the program and your experience with it. And um, yeah, last but not least, our website, where we will put also the uh, yeah, new information and post the curriculum and other information. Um, a very basic thing that uh, we're still thinking of a hashtag to publish all the activity ah. of the program is very difficult because everything sounds horrible open hardware hardware open leaders I, I don't know uh, so if you have any suggestions you're welcome yeah so
So next steps, um, well, we will put you in contact with your mentee um, by the end of this week. So basically uh, today. <laughs> today. <laughs> and um, yeah, please, we will send you also a link to the curriculum and uh, please review it and give us any suggestions you have and ask any question you have. And um, most importantly, join us in the Riot channel and start the communication right there. So, are there any questions or anything else you want to add, Julieta, uh, Andre, Jose? Um, no, not really. For, uh, for me, I think the important uh, thing to highlight here is to try to understand what is what the mentees want to get from the program and um, to use it, we when we design the curriculum, you will see uh, this evening when we send it out, is that at least it's 14 weeks. So they cannot do everything in 14 weeks, but just to have the excuse to uh, stop for a bit and reflect on what on, on a key idea that we are proposing and think for a while how that idea applies to the project and do something so it's fixed uh, by practical doing. Um, because we, we put all the things that we think is like a checklist that can kind of be missed in an open source how we got. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> I just wanted to add a, a comment. And it's that the, the reason why we are using these tools is also because it is very easy to jump into making stuff because you know how to make something or because you can do something predictable. But the challenge in, in I, I feel in this kind of uh, projects is how you translate always a vision uh, of a product into technical requirements that then you can build and, and, and release, right? And that is a, a huge challenge for, yeah, for every discipline. I'm, I'm a designer, but I think for scientists and, and engineers, it's always that uh, trans, transition from idea to, to build and that the build actually reflects what you have been thinking about and, and validating. Uh, so that's why we are setting up the course in this kind of format. Also, just like, just another thing to add, um, you as a mentor, you don't have to work like actively on the program, uh, on the project of your mentee. If you want, you can do this, but you don't have to. It's you are the guide for the mentee through the program. You, you know, you don't have to work actively, like write codes, design things uh, for your mentee. Is there any questions? Do you have any very concrete or ideas or comments? I have a question about the communication channels. So how many are there and why have been these things chosen? Mm -hmm. Is this checklist that you're mentioning, is it a document that will be updated weekly or is it already a sort of issue that can be copy pasted and checked? I didn't get the last question, sorry. So for the our open leaders, we had this issue that every new project can copy and there were a lot of tasks that you can check, but it was very useful. We could just see the whole curriculum for everybody mm. in the progress. Uh, by the do that. Yeah, like turn, turn the, the assignments into checklists in GitHub. Like yeah, we, as, as a template issue that you can copy and every project has its own uh, version of the issue that you can progress. And then on comments, you could discuss. Also for others, you could discuss these things. Okay. Um, yeah, that, that's a good suggestion. I think Andre was writing it down. Um, in terms of communication channels, and we have basically, with the organizers, the email is the most direct thing. Um, there is, uh, and we are using a chat, which is Riot, and we are not using Slack because we tried to move to open source alternatives. We know that this may be difficult at first, but we thought we should start doing it at some point. <laughs> and uh, other groups are using it and we can always reevaluate not for this cohort but for next editions um the riot channel has a general channel in which mentees and mentors are all together and organizers too 
and it has a mentors only channel in which of course it's only mentors and us so that's like an instant conversation um something we didn't mention is that we're not uh, sorry, it, we have a mentor handbook that we're going to send that has all this information all together, similar to the Mozilla Open Leaders Mentor Handbook. And there you have suggestions for uh, conference tools to use with your mentee. You can use whatever you find useful. Um, we are suggesting for the mentorship notes a template that your mentees are responsible of. So they can manage it in Google Docs, but they can also use HackMD or whatever other thing they want to use as long as it's collaborative notes and as long as they share the link with you and with us. And uh, for social networks, we have Twitter. That's all. We don't have any other thing because it's already too much work. And I think that those are all communication channels. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I wanted to add also that the reason why we didn't go for Slack in concrete is because it's blocked for some countries and uh, also with GitLab, we wanted to work with GitLab because it's open source, but GitLab is blocked for instance for Cuba and we have three teams that apply from Cuba, but that can happen with other countries. So there are two criteria to, for selection of tools. One is that there are not some countries that are blocked and two that they're open source. So we have to balance and sacrifice based on on the fact that there are not people excluded from the program. I mean, there are, GitHub also blocks, I don't remember if Iran or Iraq, but yeah. the thing is that we have lots of applicants from Cuba, so it was a bit difficult yeah. to use GitLab. So, yeah, so ideally we wanted to host our own uh, repository, but that was a lot of work, so we would try with uh, Git, but this is an open uh, thing that we are monitoring on every round, right? What, which are the best tools for the moment, so. Yes. I, I had a question. I think like everyone has, you know, somewhat different styles of work and, and so forth. I was curious sort of like where, uh, like this has a lot of detail and sort of um, like process theory behind it um, that like you have different diagrams and things like that. I was just curious where, where are the inspirations for this particular style of work? And also, not, not that I feel like it would be necessary, but if a particular project that I'm mentoring needed a different kind of style or something like that, how flexible are you uh, in that respect? Yeah, I think we are really flexible. So we chose for this uh, particular approach because it's very, it's very flexible precisely. So you can, it, it doesn't matter in which stage in your project you are, you always will need to validate something and test to validate that and you will always eventually need to go through this loop, right? So it's a value proposition uh, design uh, book is behind it and also Agile and Scrum, uh, but in a very simplified way, right? So it's not to make it too, let's say, uh, strict, but to also give some kind of structure and guidance. And it's open, but the main, let's say, line is that we keep the loop of yeah, building for something, uh, building for meaningful, uh, yeah, validation of, of a certain type. Some, some important uh, note there for me is that um, when participating of open leaders, uh, in particular, uh, I, I was working with projects that were not a lot, of, uh, a lot, of al lot aligned with software development strategies and stuff, were projects that were more analog, even um, uh, some projects were non-electronic projects, right? Um, so, so for, I think it's important for me and for the rest of the guys too, that the project, the program curriculum can adapt to the needs of the, of the mentees project. And in this sense, we understand that there is no way we, the four of us can come up with every single alternative for every project. So the idea is that the same curriculum of the program is open, so you can contribute to it. And we hope that happens. Yeah, and I just want to say I really appreciate the level of detail and the process support on there. I, I didn't, I don't have a anticipate that there would be a, a, any change, and I think it's really good to specify that pathway as a starting point. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, there is also Thank something you. that I wanted to add in that, uh, as also as a as a, let's say an approach and a proposal to you guys is 
that because we are doing this to learn as well, we are validating some things with this program. So it is important to run it, criticize it, and improve it in the next round. And uh, that, that would be really great. So w many of the things that we're doing is something that we are going to find out how good they are for this kind of uh, uh, program. And yeah, we thank you guys that you are the first that are going to help us also and join us in testing all these yeah, ideas and things. So thank you. Any other questions, comments? This is an open time for just saying whatever you want to say. So if you have time, I would be happy to learn other mentors. Uh, what are they doing? If there's time. Sure. If there can be a time for a round so that we also get to know other mentors. Yeah. That, that, is it all or I mean, it's just, high, I guess, half because this was one of the sessions or. Um, there are, this is the most populated session <laughs> um, oh, okay. because, uh, yeah, the, we had two mentors joining in, in, the, um, in the first option. But yeah, I think you can use this time for introduce briefly yourself if you want to. I don't know what the other organizers think. But if I there think are no more questions. If there are no more questions, I, I would totally be up for this. If the others are also up for this. Yeah. Uh, I can go because I actually missed the intro at the beginning. Uh, <laughs> my name is uh, Jeffrey Uwaren. Um, today's actually my last day at Public Lab, uh, where I'm a co-founder. And I've worked at Public Lab for 10 years, so it's a big day for me. Um, and I am moving on to a bunch of different independent projects. Uh, I will still remain involved in Public Lab, but just not as a member of the staff. Um, and uh, I think my interests are in community science, um, so sort of grassroots environmental monitoring uh, and accountability through evidence, uh, like pollution evidence, for example. And I guess just one thing I've recently been working on that I want to open source or I'm about to do is uh, a it's a way to um, make a print. Uh, I don't know if you know a cyanotype is a type of printing uh, using sunlight, chemically treated paper. It's like blue, blue and white printing that you might have done it when you were a kid. But I figured out a way to do it with a uh, with a laser uh, of microscopic samples. So making direct prints of uh, things like cells. Mm, uh, so cool. I'm hoping to open source <laughs> that very shortly. <laughs> wow. Next mentor wants to introduce himself. Oh, and uh, I'm in Providence, Rhode Island. I go by he, him, his. Uh, I don't know what else. <laughs> That's correct. Thank you. I can go next if uh, you want. So I'm Sanli. I'm from Utrecht. I'm a system professor of physics and uh, I'm experimentalist. I also build microscopes. Uh, for research and I also taught uh, a course called experiment design which was also based on the open leaders program uh, in the past semester it was pretty good success the idea was to make a uh, small experiments that people can evaluate and uh, measure some fundamental constants and I think uh, I'm here to learn also more how can I improve that course and on open hardware I'm mostly interested on materials which relate to sustainability and projects which relate to sustainability. Nice. Any other mentor who wants to introduce himself? I think it's him. Hi, oh. I can go. Yeah, yep. I'm Emilio Velis. I, uh, I work for the Apropedia Foundation, which runs Apropedia, a wiki for sustainability. And I've been doing that for six months. Um, and I also have done some work with open hardware. Uh, in El Salvador, it's become a little complicated uh, to get funding, etc. So I, I, I know the, the dark side of trying to bootstrap uh, you know, uh, a project, but also the good parts of it and how uh, networking can get you very far. And Right now, I am working mostly on knowledge and yeah, all that kind of work with Apropedia on sustainability. Very cool. <laughs> uh, 
um, another mentor wants to introduce. Hi, Jeremy here. Yeah. Um, currently a train. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm a lecturer at the University of Bath. Um, generally interested uh, to learn about well, um, um, collaboration practices in uh, the development of open source hardware. So basically, um, what is different between uh, developing a technology in the R&D department in a company from uh, developing a technology or a product in an open community. And I'm trying to understand that, to put that into words and to give that back to the communities, uh, to open source other communities, basically uh, summarize what I do. Great. Um, Maxime, you wanted to talk? <laughs> yeah, nice to be. So hi everybody, I'm Maxim. I'm working at the University of Sussex in UK, so not in EU anymore. Um, I'm studying neuroscience here and I'm mostly interested in open science, open source tools and equipment, might be for research, maybe for education. There's a big lack of that and what I found in, at least in my research field is that most neuroscientists are biologists and they lack the interest or the knowledge to Built their own engineering equipment, for example, might be for tuition or might be for recording devices. We have a big lack of that, not only for academia in the say, rich country, but in academia in general, and not in education. So that's not my past. And this is where I would like to improve some, I mean, I can say that, to hammer some ideas in some old fashioned ways. <laughs> Um, I think the only one missing is Kevin. Hello, I'm Kevin. I'm some, from the Cree Paris, and I'm a researcher in um, open um, healthcare devices, an open source device for healthcare. And I'm teaching also in the master uh, undergrad. And I try to incorporate um, real problems uh, of sustainability into uh, my teaching. And also we do a summer school, uh, trying to do this for one month. And I'm super happy to be here with you and to know you better. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, remember, we also have the Riot channel uh, in which you are only there, <laughs> only mentors. So you can share links and uh, everything about your work. Um, and I think, I don't know if anyone has any other question now that after some time, <laughs> Um, of introductions, or if you want to talk about anything else, we have 10 minutes left of um, conference, so we can use them. I, I had a quick question, just I couldn't find um, a link to the general Riot channel that I got to work. I think the one in the presentation maybe is not um, pasting correctly. Okay, I will check that. But yeah, uh, no rush on that. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, something we didn't, sorry, we didn't mention is that by the mid, uh, let's say week seven, around week, week seven, we're going to send both you and your mentee and uh, to everyone um, a survey to understand if everything is going well, if there's anything that needs to be modified, but you can reach out anytime. If you have a problem with uh, your mentee not attending or um, whatever problem you can think of, just reach out. It's perfectly fine. Um, and of course, uh, we have our community guidelines that are published on the website. This will be, all this I'm saying will be on the email uh, this evening, but uh, just bear in mind that you, I mean, we all have to follow them. So if you detect any kind of behavior uh, that is out of it, again, just contact us directly. Anything, yeah. Well, thanks very much, everyone. I actually have to run a little early, but uh, it's good to see yeah. you all. No well, worries. It's great to have you here. And we'll send a recording too if you, if you need to recap anything. Awesome. Thank okay. you very much. Have a great day. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Well, bye.